Well, if you are a fan of dystopian fiction and during this pandemic time, it's a great genre to be reading. Uh, I'd like to add something to your reading list. We have for you really a great one to consider this morning. It is Canadian. It's called Crosshairs. It's set right here in Canada. And it deals with government sanctioned regime who is rounding up communities of color, people living with disabilities and members of the LGBTQ plus community into labor camps. But like any good read, a hero emerges. His name is Kay. He is a queer femme Jamaican Filipino man. And joining us now to explain is the author, Catherine Hernandez. Good morning to you and congratulations on the book. Thank you so much. It's such an honor to speak with you this morning. I can't wait to, to, for you to share more of this story with everybody. The book opens with a beautiful poem that is dedicated to the 49 victims of the Pulse nightclub massacre. How did that event inspire this book? After the massacre that occurred in the Pulse nightclub where uh, racialized people from the LGBTQ2S community were violently slaughtered, uh, many of us in community wondered whether or not we should purchase guns if we should learn how to defend ourselves. And so from there um, came the question of what is the price of fighting back and what is the price of being passive? Mm -hmm. So the novel just came about just um, exploring all of the difficult decisions made in the face of fascism and war. Some of those decisions are made by uh, the main character of the book, a man named Kay. Can you tell us a little bit about the challenges that Kay is up against? Well, Kay, being a mixed race, uh, black and Asian person, he's feminine, he's, um, he's a black presenting in this world. And I wanted to have this person, the main character who um, navigating safety is a, a difficult exercise each and every day. There is no hiding. Um, and um, when faced with a rising fascist regime, there is no way to, as he says, uh, wash off the black and wash off the feminine off of himself. Uh, and so he has no choice other than to go into hiding. Um, and that's what I wanted, is that I wanted to really capture uh, what it's like to be part of um, a community, like uh, when you know you have people in my chosen family who really are having a difficult time navigating their safety in this very terrifying reality that we're already living. Some of the experiences that Kay goes through, including uh, one at his church, I imagine have drawn from real stories that you've heard of or learned, uh, you know, throughout your time researching this book. Absolutely. Um, we, I interviewed um, several people with regards to their experiences having survived war um, or um, uh, religious interference with their uh, sexual and gender identities. Um, and it, it was a heartbreaking process, um, bringing their truths to light. Um, and uh, I was honored to be able to receive their stories. And I hope that I did their stories uh, justice. Um, a lot of the times uh, we were dealing with um, people who, um, in finding out their own identities, uh, were told that they were evil, that they needed to be corrected. And um, there were several interventions from whatever um, their uh, religious communities were. You talk a lot about allyship in this book and make the comparison between true allyship versus performative allyship. What does true allyship look like in this story? Well, with performative allyship, performative allyship really focuses on the shame that we might have with our privilege rather than the hurt that we have caused. So we may cry, we may uh, showcase our charitable actions and take up space in social justice movements in order to sidestep our responsibility and put the emotional labor on the people that we're oppressing. Um, embodied allyship means believing with your entire body that all of us deserve to live and love equally between our conversations at the dinner table all the way to the government policies that we're authoring, even though there might be limited access to resources. And so that's what happens in the novels that you see in the face of um, widespread uh, environmental devastation and financial collapse is that um, allies are challenged to really believe with their whole bodies that we all deserve to live and to love. Catherine Hernandez, it is a powerful story. Again, congratulations to you on uh, the book, the title of the book for anyone interested. And I, I recommend that you pick it up. It's called Crosshairs. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Henry. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe here. And you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.